In this video, I'm going to show you how to test your chatbot using a technique called Kfold's cross-validation. Now, to set the stage, imagine that you have a chatbot and you're fairly early in the development. You've collected a set of utterances that you think the users will uh, speak. You've got the intents that these utterances match to. And you want to understand uh, from a very basic level do these intents work or not? Are, are these intents uh, distinct enough that the chatbot can tell them apart? Or are they so confused that there's going to be a lot of training work required to improve this? Uh, and to do this testing, we're going to use a, a tool called the WA Testing Tool. Uh, it's available out on github.com. And we're going to use this tool, uh, again, to run cross-validation. Uh, and let's show what that is. So you can think of uh, every piece of training data as one of the balls on this, on this diagram. And the entirety of your data, your training data would be one entire row in this, uh, in this diagram. And what Kfolds does, uh, K is actually just a number. So this, this diagram is showing you four folds. What it does is it creates four different folds of your data. And in every fold, it holds out one part of your data and it tests it against the other parts. Uh, so essentially what you're testing here is, if I hadn't trained on this group of utterances, how well would I predict them? And a KFOLS is a clever enough algorithm that you can actually run that test on all of the data uh, in your training data and you'll get a sense of how confusing your data is. Um, this is not a test that will tell you how you perform at runtime uh, against, what you, uh, against what users may actually say to your chatbot. But again, it's an early test you can do. It, it tells you uh, how confused or how consistent your intents are. And it's a, it's a good thing to run early in your, uh, in your development process. Uh, so I'm going to set up the, the tool to run this. Uh, I've cloned the tool. Uh, onto my laptop, and I'm going to set up the configuration file so that we can run this tool. I need to provide just a couple of pieces of information. These pieces are all available uh, from my chatbot. And I go to the view API details, and I'm going to find out my API key. I'll drop that in the config file. I need to fix the URL. I'm going to need the workspace ID as well. The workspace ID is right here in part of the legacy URL. I'm in the kfolds mode, and I want to use three folds instead of five because I'm on a light plan. OK. That ought to do nicely. And I'm going to uh, execute this command, and then we'll, we'll uh, look at how it's, how it's working. The first looks to make sure it kicks off correctly. OK, it's getting to work. So first, I'm going to show you uh, what my chatbot actually looks like. So you can see here, I've got a collection of, of intents. I've got 18 different intents. I've got, on average, about 10 examples per intent. Uh, that's, that's pretty good. but. Again, I'm fairly early in development. I don't necessarily understand uh, how well these intents are going to perform, which of these intents might be confused for each other. So again, what I'm doing in the k-folds is uh, I'm splitting the data several different ways. Uh, in this example, I'm running it three ways. Um, and so it's cutting the data into thirds. It's training on just two thirds of the data and then trying to predict that remaining one third of the data. 
And we can see here again, I had sort of the average of 10 in my uh, initial workspace. Uh, the tool has created these three different K-folds workspaces. If I open up one of them, I can see I've got the same 18 and 10, but you can see I've got now an average of maybe seven-ish, uh, seven examples per intent. I'm about two thirds, and each of my uh, folds is in fact going to be uh, two thirds of the training data. Um, so with that look, let's take a look and see if it if it finished, uh, and it did. Um, and I've got a couple of uh, result files here. So at the end, we can see that I've built an overall. Um, it, it's shown me how it's done on every single piece of data uh, in this metrics file. Um, I've got uh, a diagram I can look at, and I've got a confusion matrix. So uh, first, let's let's open up this this image. And so the, what this is doing is it's showing me my performance uh, per intent. Uh, so the size of the boxes indicates how many examples I've got in each of the um, in each of the intents. Uh, and we can see that the, the, the sizes are, are fairly similar. Um, and we can also see uh, the color, which is an indicator of the performance. Uh, so in here, the darker green is good. The brighter red is bad. Um, if you can't distinguish the colors, the, good, the, the higher accuracy is in the lower left, and it decreases as you go to the upper right. Uh, so we can see here, We've got a couple of intents that are being a, a little bit challenged, and we'll certainly want to keep an eye on those. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at our other reports as well. Uh, so the next thing I'll open up is the confusion matrix. And what this is showing me is for every uh, intent, um, Another instead matches to each intent. What did it actually get predicted as? Uh, so the good thing, uh, a perfect a perfect confusion matrix would be entirely black on the diagonal, and any spots where I've got dark colors off of the diagonal, this is a place where I'd want to check things out. Uh, so I can see there's there's a couple uh, confused intents. Uh, redeem points seems to be confused with uh, the loyalty status. Um, perhaps from the name, that's not surprising. Uh, the, the status of my loyalty program may be, I may ask questions about that very similarly to I, how I ask about redeeming points. Um, there's a couple that I didn't get right at all. Uh, customer care appointments looks like that one is, is pretty challenged. Um, so I've got a possibility of some intents here that, that need uh, additional work. Um, I've also got a, a raw report which is going to show me um, all of the individual metrics or, or utterances. And so I can see here for every single utterance in my training data, what was it um, supposed to be? What was it predicted as? Um, so the golden is what it was supposed to be. The predicted is what the, the bot said it was. Um, I've got filterable columns here on uh, did it match, uh, one zero or yes, no, however you prefer. And I've got a confidence as well. So between these different columns, uh, I can get a real sense of what individual statements were confused and what statements ought I to go after next. Um, for this exercise, I will, I will skip that though. Uh, the last report that I get is an overall accuracy. So this is similar to the first one, but this averages out uh, across all the intents. And you can see here that I've got an average that looks like it's right around uh, high 60s, low 70s um, performance. Now, again, you may feel that's uh, a, a good result or a bad result. Um, it's important to understand that this is no, in no way predictive of how your chatbot will perform in production or how it will perform against data it hasn't seen. Because again, a K-folds test is, is only using the training data that you have provided. Um, but we will cover in a future video how we can uh, test against production data and how we can do 
uh, improvement for the chatbot. So again, this tool is available out uh, on GitHub, uh, Watson Assistant Testing Tool, and uh, please stay tuned for additional videos that show you how to test with production data and how to improve with production data.